Hey, everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed uh, the, the message dealing with 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hope you got it. Some some of them, are, and I don't know if they move in some different directions. I don't know what they're doing. But the bottom line is, uh, continue to, if, if you could, just continue to keep up with us. Consider reading the Word of God and understanding the power of God, man. Now, guess what? The exciting part is that we're getting ready to do the last chapter of 2 Timothy. Well, what I'm trying to say, I'm sitting there saying this, that we're staying on focus, staying to the point where we, we're going through the New Testament. And uh, <laughs> like I said, it's to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. The fivefold ministry gifts, I'm going to put them up here. The fivefold ministry gifts are for to equip you, the saint, to do the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? Preach the word of God. Amen? So, by fact, let's read 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, the subtitle right here is Preach the Word. Now, you got to ask yourself, is preaching the word supposed to be for the fivefold ministry gifts? Or is it supposed to be for you? Because if you read that scripture, you see it says it's to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. A lot of us sit there thinking the work of the ministry is to invite people to church. So that if they can get you, go to the altar and sit there and say, I give my turn my life for the Lord. And don't understand that they can turn their life for the Lord in front of you. The reason I sit there and do Romans 10, 9 and 10 all the time is the point to show that if someone wants to receive Christ, you tell them. The scripture says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, maybe down here too, <laughs> somewhere, I feel the way I can make it fit, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, and not the physical heart, but the spirit man, for with the heart one believes into righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made of salvation. So, that's why I'm equipping you to make, to my point, that's why I'm bringing that woman over again. Just in case someone comes to you and said, what must I do to be saved? I don't want you to sit there and say, well, come out to church service on Sunday. And we, we're going to go ahead. That person could have died between the time you told them that and the time they, you know, Sunday service come around. And you're going to feel bad because the person had opportunity to turn their life over to Christ. But you felt that you couldn't pray with them. So all you do is pray. The big confession. Amen? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, read this letter, uh, 2 Timothy, the last chapter, so that we go and say we read another book in the Bible, the New Testament. Amen? <laughs> Love it. Let's see what we got here. Subtitle said, Preach the Word, 2 Timothy chapter 4, last chapter, verse 1. I charge thee, talking about you now, Therefore, before God, in the Lord Yeshua Christ, who shall judge the quick in the dead, at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. You hear that? Preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Huh? Reprove, come on y'all, rebuke, exalt, huh? with all long-suffering, meaning patience, in doctrine. And you got to know the doctrine, be able to preach the doctrine. And you got to have patience or long-suffering in order to be able to communicate with those who want to understand it, but they got the world system just like you had the world system in you, Amen. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they keep, shall they heap to themselves teachers, listen to this, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears to hear something that is contrary to doctrine. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned in unto fables. I think that's where racism comes from. 
I think that was the slave trade was all about. I think the crusade was all about that. I think the Jim Law, Little Joe Crow laws are. I think the fact that you got people sitting there talking about, I just heard an article or some man preacher saying there's going to be a civil war. And every time they say, some of the people who think civil war, they're talking about between blacks and whites. Whereas you got other people sitting there saying between the Democrats and the Republicans or from the liberals and the progressives. You, you know what I mean? There's other people, everybody got their own perception of what they think civil war is supposed to be. Doing that, do you really want to kill somebody? That's what you that's what you're getting your assault weapons for? Oh, well. If you get that much hate in you, 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 you dead. You're right. You know, the Bible says in First John chapter, I don't know if I can put it up there, may I fit somewhere in there. First John chapter 315. He who hates his brother is a murderer. And let's put it this way. If you can sit there and get a assault weapon and, and shoot children and women and innocent men. Just because of the color of the skin, oh, you have your reservation. You, you, I understand. You already have a reservation for eternal death. Just all I'm saying. All right. Let's see here. Uh, verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, and do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there be there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do you love the appearing of the Lord? Or do you want to sit there and go and kill people because the color is skin? Mm. Think about it. Here's, here's the, he giving you another one. Personal instructions. And I might do a part A, part B on this because I don't talk too long. All right, let's get Personal instructions, verse 9. Do, the, do thy diligence to come unto me shortly. For Demesis has forsaken me, having loved his present, this present world, and is departed from Thessalonica, uh, Cretan to Galatia, thus, and Timothy unto Demalia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring with, him, with them, with thee, for he is profitable for me for the ministry. And Titicus have I said to Ephesus, the cloak that I left at Troas from Copperus, when thou comest, bring with thee, in the books, but especially the parchment, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord rewards him according to his works, of whom be thou ware also, for he has greatly withstood our words. For at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthens me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of lions. And the Lord shall deliver me from evil works, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And final greeting, verse 19. Check that out. Paul, Paul went through some stuff. And I mean, he's telling you, even talking about the fact is that those who call themselves Christians uh, abandoned him and left him and nobody stood with him, but the Lord stood with him. And he preached. I guess he's talking about most of the Jewish Jewish people uh, or Hebrews did not stay with them, but he stood and stayed and preached the gospel and the guidance to the Gentiles. But final greetings, verse 19. Salute Priscilla and Aquila. That's a male and a female. In the household of Onesiphorus, uh, Ephratus abode in Corinthian, but Trophinus have I left at Metilus sick. Do that diligence to come before winter. Uh, Eve, you lust greeteth thee, and Prudent, and Linus, and Claudia, and all the children. The Lord, Yeshua Christ, be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Amen. And look, like I said, that's the role of a Christian. The first part there. And you go to Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess your mouth, the Lord Yeshua, and believe in your heart that God raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man is unto righteousness, the mouth unto confession. And remember, Christ did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen.